Hey, hey, Bubba Sparks, baby, holding it down for New South I 49. You know how we roll, Posse TV style. Go! Hey, Bubba Sparks, man, I'm doing great, man. I'm uh, actually back in uh, NYC for the first time in about a year, man, so it's uh, nice to get back into the city. Uh, actually, we had a little rain this morning, but uh, got this new album, man, up here plugging the new album, man. Uh, actually, my, my second album in the last uh, six years, so I'm very excited about it. It's called Made on Makashmir Road, tribute to the road I actually grew up on down in LaGrange, Georgia. You know, I'm a, I'm a real country dude, man. I grew up in the country. That's always been a heavy component of, of who I am as an artist and who I am as a person, so I basically just... Uh, just kind of went back to you know where I actually grew up, you know the farm I actually grew up on, and and uh, shot a lot of the video there, and uh, kind of you know just showed the two different sides of you know down there in the country, which is basically this this way everywhere, but uh, the way we do it down there is we work hard and we play harder. So uh, basically, I showed like a work day in the video, you know what I'm saying, how we work, how we get it in out in the country, and then uh, and then basically you know when it's quitting time. We invite the girls over, we build a fire, you know what I'm saying? We start sipping on something and we have a little party. So that's basically what the video was about. Country and Southern Rock, I mean, going all the way back to, to uh, you know, my first album with Timberland, Dark Days, Bright Nights, the second album, especially Deliverance. Um, you know, country and Southern Rock themes have always been uh, prevalent in my music. Um, you know, I did break when I, you know, went with the whole Miss New Booty direction. I kind of broke it, went in a, a, a different way at that time. But, um, you know, basically, as far as, you know, I took a lot of time off, and when I came back, you know, I wanted to get back to my roots, get back to, to who I really am as a person and, and what I always set out to represent as an artist. So that was definitely uh, the country and southern rock theme. Yeah, I mean, if you remember, like, even the ugly video, you know, we was out in the country, wilding out, you know what I'm saying, pigs, hayfield, you know, just showing that real that real country culture. So, you know, it's just all about getting back to, to, to that, to my roots. Oh, yeah, Bizarre from D12, that's my homie, man. It was, uh... Actually, he had just hit me up on Instagram the other day, so shout out to Bazaar. But yeah, it was cool uh, at that time to get him to come out, come all the way down to, to the country in Georgia and be a part of that video with us. Yeah, he was actually in the pig pen with us, so that's memorable, man. I'll never forget that. Man, it was very surreal, man. I actually, uh, you know, when the first album came out and, you know, Ugly was a number one record, you know, that album ended up going platinum. Um, you know, I remember it all kind of hit me because I was on, you know, on TRL and 106 in Park and all that stuff, and that, that was like what was popping then. And um, and I remember actually walking through Times Square, you know, over there by the TG TGIF Fridays, and I'm just used to being, you know, old simple country boy from Lagrange, Georgia, and all of a sudden somebody recognizes me walking through Times Square, and the next thing you know. People are flocking to me. I got people running up, grabbing on me and stuff. I was like, it, that's when it first hit me. Like, I, I'm gonna have to get some security and all that stuff. So, so it was crazy, man. It was crazy to have grown up, you know, like I said, down in Georgia, and then, uh, and then to have uh, reached a point where people were recognizing me in Times Square, man. So, it, it was cool, man. It was, it was, it was cool because uh, we had actually put out. Uh, my first album was called Dark Days, Bright Nights, and we had put out uh, an independent version of it, um, like in late uh, 1999, and it really started buzzing down in Georgia, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we ended up, we sold like five, ten thousand copies down down in Georgia, just out of the trunk. You know what I'm saying? Like straight independent, and um, and we had actually found some distribution, uh, some a, a guy out of Florida by the name of Doug K that said that uh, that he was going to put it in stores for us because it was making so much noise. So when he did that, it started moving even more units in stores. And then we actually got a lawyer, a guy by the name of Nick Ciora up here that heard it and went crazy about it. And he had plugs with all the labels. And so uh, that's when we, we started shopping at the different labels. And that's when Jimmy Iovine and Interscope heard it. And uh, he's the one that plugged me with Tim after that. So the rest was history. Yeah, I actually talked to Tim last night. And, um, and yeah, I mean, we still still have a, uh, a pretty cool relationship um, you know and, and it's just like the history we made and the things we did back in those days it was just you know I, 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 I treasure it forever man like he definitely definitely rode for me you know what I'm saying I rode for him and it was a great time for sure well basically Deliverance was about um, my experiences between uh, the first and second album um, that was when I, I really first started to battle addiction a, a little bit. You know, I have some pretty well documented issues with addiction. I'm not bashful about it. You know, I'm, uh, 
you know, I was, I was a sick person for a long time, and I'm well today, and I lived through it, so I'm actually grateful. And and uh, look at look at uh, my story as testimony. You know, I can maybe I can help somebody else not have to make the same mistakes I made. But um, that was basically what Deliverance was about. It was very uh, introspective. Um, I was reflecting on on how my life had changed, and how maybe people around me had changed, and how. You know, I could kind of tell that I had I had slipped at, at that point and maybe disappointed some people close to me, and maybe some people close to me had disappointed me. And um, you know, that 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 was a very powerful song. You know, I gotta say, as far as like, you know, Ugly was probably a bigger record at the time. Miss New Booty was a bigger record as far as radio, but as far as like the record that people remember, that fans come up to me every day, and and everybody's got a Deliverance story. You know, Deliverance. So many people come up and share. Uh, stories with me about how deliverance helped them get through some type of tough time and and I always tell people what's crazy about that is that that's what it was doing for me at the time when I wrote it it was actually therapy for me you know it was actually helping me sort out issues that I was dealing with at that point in my life so that's awesome man that's, that just shows you how wonderful and powerful music can really be tip wasn't that video wasn't it tip wasn't a lovely video yeah yeah well yeah lovely was basically just about you know I came out you know on this first song you know ugly and you know we we still out in the country you know what I'm saying we we in the pig pen we still wilding out you know we still gutter gutter and grimy and grimy you know and then basically like the lovely song and video was basically about you know then I make all this money you know what I'm saying and, I, and then I'm in all these city places you know I'm, I'm in you know, I'm starting to acquire things, possessions, you know, and starting to travel all around the world. But, you know, they got they, we got an expression down there where I'm from. You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. You know, and so that's basically what that was about. You know, it's kind of like, the, I was like the Beverly Hillbillies of 2001, you know. Yeah, well, basically, like, the banging video, I was, um, basically the concept is, it was, it was in a way, it was a, um, a sequel to the Splinter video. Um, that we had shot before that and um, basically like I was dug out of the ground you know what I'm saying like you know uh, metaphorically you know as far as my career for all intents and purposes was dead you know what I'm saying I, I took six years off I mean you think about it like if you're doing anything at an elite level like you know a, a, a pro basketball player pro football player whatever if they're performing at a high level and they take six years off you know, there's going to be some rust, you know what I'm saying? And you're basically starting over as far as, you know, I admit, I'm, ma I'm making a comeback right now. That's what I'm doing, and America loves a comeback, so get on board. But, uh, yeah, that's what's happening, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I definitely, I stopped making music for a long time. I actually stopped. And, um, you know, in Splinter, the video is about me being, you know, basically uh, reborn, you know what I'm saying? Being dug out of the ground and being reborn as this new person. And, um... And then basically, uh, banging is about the unfinished business of me basically trying to, uh, you know, with the metaphor being a club, you know, as far as like trying to negotiate with St. Saint Peter to get into heaven and get my soul, you know what I'm saying, to get my soul back, you know what I'm saying. And it's like it might even, we leave it open to interpretation whether my soul's in, in, in heaven or hell, you know what I'm saying. But it's like basically saying like I still got some business left to do on this planet. You know what I'm saying? I still got a lot of good that I can do in this world, so I need to reclaim uh, my soul just for a, for a little while, you know, so I can finish some business down here on Earth before I go back to heaven, or I hope heaven could be hell, though. You know how it goes. <laughs> Basically, man, it just looked fly. <laughs> it was just a different way, way to spell sparks because, you know, a lot of people out in the country would always call me Bubba. That's a pretty common name out in the country. And then uh, when I came up with the spark, like, let's spark it, you know what I'm saying? Like, in, in terms of, you know, in the hip-hop sense, or, you know, maybe I was even talking about, you know, Spark the Reefer back at that time, but spark it, whatever. But, um, you know, and then I just felt like that was just a cool way to spell it with the three X's. Y'all check it out. This is Bubba Sparks. Thank y'all for having me today. The new album, Made on Makash Mill Road. And hey, you know what it is. I'm up here in NYC holding it down with my folks from Posse TV all the time. Not just some of the time. Yeah.